the mental health day. So this month, I want to do something really special and different. For the next 20 days, I'm going to be sharing some educational content about mental health. From burnout, anxiety, imposter syndrome, to self-esteem, and lots more. We're going to be having lots of conversations. So if you want to learn about how you can take care of your mental health generally, then this one is for you. There's going to be a new video every single day for the next 20 days. I'm really optimistic that this is going to go a long way and, you know, in educating and promoting the awareness of mental health. Come with me on this journey. If there's a topic you want me to talk about, please feel free to drop it in the comment section. Make sure you share this, be a part of this, um, comment, like, and let's get this to more people. My name is Miriam Yuba, and I meant to see you on day one. Well, thank you for watching. Bye. Anytime you hear the word mental health, Think about your emotional, social, psychological well-being. In fact, every aspect of your life in general. Sometimes I hear people say they don't have mental health. Eh? You have mental health too. I have mental health. Everyone has mental health. What you probably don't have is mental health illness or mental health disorders. Welcome to day one of our 20-day mental health education journey. Mental health has to do with how you think, how you feel, um, how you behave, right? Everything that has to do with you, how you cope with stress, um, how you relate to others, how you make your decisions of course all of those things concern your mental health think about it like your physical health you eat well you sleep well you exercise you do everything you can to maintain your physical body because that's what we see on the outside how about your mental health it is not only when something is wrong with somebody that we assume that the person has mental health illness hello that's not right we all go through tough times where our mental health you know is being tested now it could be from work it could be you know from relationship issues financial worries or you know just generally being overwhelmed with life pressure but the more we talk about it, the less stigma I'm um, with you and the more we can also support each other. So what I want you to have at the back of your mind, I want you to think of mental health as, you know, something that you do constantly. Some days will get better than others and that is okay, right? So on days when you feel overwhelmed, on days when you feel really down, what you need to do is to take care of your mental health. So stick around and tomorrow you're going to see my face again and let me know if today's video was beneficial to you and if you learned something. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Welcome to day two. Let's talk about self-awareness and how it impacts your mental health. Have you ever had to lash out at somebody because something else frustrated you or you literally just lost your cool when you're not supposed to? Have you ever experienced that? Well, in psychology, that is actually called displacement, but that's not the context of the conversation today. The ability to catch that moment and pause and have a reflect, so ask yourself, what is wrong with me? What is going on with me? Why am I reacting this way? It has a lot to do with how self-aware you are of yourself. So being self-aware is all about you um, having an understanding of yourself, your thoughts, your values, your beliefs, your actions, and everything that makes up your entirety as an individual. It means you understand who you are, you know what you want, um, you know how you feel, you know the things that you do. How do you become self-aware? write please write keep your journal write down your thoughts your feelings the things that you know is going through your mind please write it down and notice the patterns over time stay mindful and be present in your own life like be very present know what is happening in your life take note of your emotions your body everything around you please stay active and be present in your life next thing you want to also do is to have conversations with people around you ask for feedback genuine feedback ask from your friends talk to people and ask questions how did you think i reacted in that particular situation you know this would help you to know the area you need to work on on yourself i hope that you pay more attention to your self-awareness and continue to work on yourself because that's going to help a lot in improving your mental health and that of others around you i'll see you tomorrow in my next video thank you for watching bye Happy World Mental Health Day. The theme for this year's celebration is mental health in the workplace. Years ago, I had an opportunity of working in an organization that contributed a whole lot to my growth and development. However, I also worked with people in that organization who left me with a really bad taste. Well, I could say I understand what it meant to work with really toxic bosses. Maybe I had a perfect blend of the good, the bad, and the ugly experiences. I remember working with a boss who would literally call you stupid, foolish, and all sorts of printable names. I'm not even exaggerating. I also worked with another person who I would literally pray to say, God, please don't let me meet this woman today. Don't let her see me. Not physically, but you know the kind of scene I'm talking about. A lot of those my experiences I already documented in my book, Supreme and Smiling. But that's not again the subject of the conversation. The workplace happens to be the place that a lot of working people spend the most of their time. But imagine spending the whole of your time in a place that does not really value your essence as a person. It's very terrible. Years down the line, I've had to work with teams, I've had to build communities, I've had to handle some leadership positions. And I can tell you for a fact that one of the things I'm learning, even in my work, is leading with empathy. So, on a day like this, 
either as an employee or as an employer. My plea to you is to create a safe environment for people to work in. Make the workplace a conducive place that people will be eager to look forward to coming the next day. Don't make the work environment feel hostile and unsafe. Let's be a part of the change that we desire. It is possible when you and I play our part. I'll see you in my next video. We made it to day four. Today, let's talk about some common misconceptions that people have about mental health. Come closer, you're going to learn something today. Number one misconception. Some people think mental health issues are rare. Should I shock you? According to World Health Organization, one out of four persons will experience mental health issues in their lifetime. Conditions like depression, suicide, anxiety, most of those things are quite popular and lots of people really do experience it in really chronic ways. Number two, people with mental health illness are weak or they can just snap out of it. This is a very wrong idea to have. Mental health disorders are not a sign of weakness. It's just like the way people fall sick. Some mental health issues are, you know, biological, genetic, um, even environmental factors are also responsible for some, um, you know, mental health issues. Dealing with mental health issues does not mean that the person is weak or that the person can just, you know, snap out of it. And when you tell them this, it actually oversimplifies the complexities of mental health challenges. So please don't just tell somebody to snap out of it. It's not that easy. Number three, mental health issues are a sign of failure or lack of success. Hmm. Have you ever heard the word, the rich also cry? Well, I want to use that to illustrate that anyone can have a mental health issue. CEOs, celebrities, pastors, Christians, anybody really can have mental health issues if they don't take care of their mental health. Success in life does not guarantee immunity from mental health challenges. What you should do is take care of your mental health and be very intentional about it. I hope that you learned something today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow in my next video. One of my colleagues here, um, Mad, <laughs> and she's going to be sharing um, a few misconceptions that people have about mental health. Mad, what's your experience, mm -hmm. um, you know, with how people misconceive mental mm -hmm. health? Do you want to share something? Yeah, so since uh, I come from a Middle Eastern area, mm -hmm. so the thing that I noticed that we have in common, mm -hmm. African people and Middle Eastern Arabs, that sometimes we connect religion or, or let's say his relationship or her relationship with the God or mm -hmm. whatever it was. So just because they are facing some mental issues. Mm -hmm. So just because you're facing some uh, mental health problems, such as depression, OCD, whatever was it, that does not mean that it's because you're not close enough to God. I come from a place that has Muslims and Christians and they live all together. Me, my family itself has some Christian and uh, Muslim members. And sometimes they use such things to undermine your spiritual relationship with God or whatever it was your religion. So that is a big, big problem. First of all, it causes uh, pressure. It puts up pressure and stresses the patient or the, the person more and more. Thank you for sharing much. I'm mm -hmm. grateful. Have yeah, by the way, one last thing. Also, I'm not saying that religion does not help with mental health mm -hmm, issues. Mm -hmm. Spirituality helps. Of course. It of is course. known. You're psychologist. But that does not mean that also being a uh, non-spiritual person mm -hmm. is the cause for your mental health issues. That's right, that's right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great, Have a great day. Bye. Bye. We made it to day five. If you've not been sharing any of those videos, I think you're not doing well. Let's get as many people as possible to learn. Today we're going to be doing acronyms of some mental health disorders. And the reason you should know them is so that you will not be claiming what you don't have. These days, I see a lot of people say that they have ADHD, I have OCD, I have AD. They don't even know the meaning of this thing. Don't forget that this is just basic knowledge sharing. So let's start with the really common ones. ADHD, what does it mean? Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Next on the line, OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. LD, Learning Disorder. ID, Intellectual Disability. CD, Conduct Disorder. BD, Bipolar Disorder. BPD, Borderline Personality Disorder. GAD, Generalized Anxiety Disorder. MDD, Major Depressive Disorder. MI, Mental Illness. PDD, Persistent Depressive Disorder. PTS, Post Traumatic Stress. PTSD, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. There are a whole lot of them. I simply just, you know, highlighted some of the common ones. If you want to learn more about any of these things, please read about them. It is wrong for you to just say that you have any disorder without you seeing a professional um, therapist or um, psychiatrist. So please desist from using any of these words. It's not fanciful. There's nothing fun about it. Please take note. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new today. I'll see you tomorrow in my next video. Why are you putting your life in the hands of another person to take care of for you?
Today, let's talk about self-care and how it is very important to your mental health. Welcome to day six. I know you're quite familiar with the word self-care, but what does it really mean? I'd say that self-care is a practice of intentional actions that helps us to take care of our physical, mental, emotional, social, and general well-being. And no, I'm not talking about spa dates and bubble baths, although that's also part of it. I'm talking about doing whatever and everything necessary for you to take care and maintain your mental well-being. Think of it like refueling your car. When your car begins to show you the sign that your petrol level is going now, you instantly know that you need to refill it. Think of self-care in that manner. When you neglect your self-care, stress, anxiety, um, burnout, all of these things will build up. You know what they say about little drops of water. It makes a mighty ocean. When these things continue to compound and you've not taken some time to take care of your mental health, it could result in something even bigger. What then should you begin to do to, you know, take care of yourself? They're really simple tips, honestly. But the most important thing is that you're doing it consistently because that's how you can continue to improve yourself. So for your physical self-care, you want to exercise, you want to eat well, you want to rest well, eat balanced diet, take breaks, you know, pamper yourself because you deserve it. Practice self-compassion, journal, express your thoughts. Don't bottle things up. Cry if you need to. So, and of course, set emotional boundaries. This one will help you a lot. Now, finally, I would say the self-care is not selfish. In fact, it is not luxury. Take care of yourself. You're all you've got. I'll see you in my next video. Have a great day. Do you often see yourself as less valuable? Or that you are not worth it? Or that you are simply just not deserving? Today, let's talk about low self-esteem and how it is very critical to your mental health. Welcome to day seven. Self-esteem has to do with how you perceive your worth and your value as an individual. When this perception is low, um, it means that something is wrong somewhere. That's why we say low self-esteem. As a matter of fact, let me quickly say that either high self-esteem, low self-esteem, either of these two concepts can actually be in the extreme. So the most important thing is that you want to be in the middle. That is, you having a good self-esteem, not high, not low. Do you get that? Now, here are some common signs of low self-esteem. You're always criticizing yourself. You're so hard on yourself. Even when others are you know, seeing the positive things in you, you just simply cannot believe it. You just simply cannot accept it. Something is wrong. You want to check that. You're a people pleaser. You struggle to say no. You don't have boundaries. Something is wrong. You need to check it. You're constantly comparing yourself with others. I know social media has even made some things worse. You see yourself as inadequate because you are focused on, you know, other people's reels and highlights on social media. You're always comparing yourself something is wrong somewhere how can you start to improve your self-esteem treat yourself with some kindness and understanding when you make a mistake remind yourself that it's okay you're human every time you think that you are not good enough you are not valuable enough you will never succeed take some time to question why you are thinking that way where are these thoughts coming from this one i cannot emphasize it enough surround yourself with positive people make sure that the people around you are those who really believe in you those who would hold you up even when you think less of yourself and if you have tried these things and they're still not working please see a professional this is very important see um you know therapist and you know just go for some counseling with somebody else you know can help you highlight some of these things and walk you through the process thank you for watching i hope you learned something new today i'll see you in my next video do you know there's something called smiling depression? Have you ever heard of a situation where somebody who you know to be the life of the party, energetic, you know, suddenly commits suicide and you're wondering, how can this person who I always see to be smiling, happy, joyous, and you know, doing all of those stuff, um, suddenly take his own life? Well, that might be smiling depression right there. So come closer, let's learn. Welcome to day eight. So smiling depression can be described as a condition where individuals hide the depression behind a mask of happiness, often concealing their true emotions and their struggles from others. Now, you'd often see these people, you know, socialize, make friends, outwardly, um, they appear to be the happiest people. But inside, there's an inner turmoil in them. These individuals also find it difficult to seek for help because of course they maintain a you know facade of happiness sometimes they feel like they don't want to be a burden to others now here's what you should do in case you probably feel like you're going through this or you know anyone who might be going through this please acknowledge the problem the moment you accept that you need help that's like a step closer to really seeking and finding the help please go and seek professional help immediately therapy and meditation please speak to a professional it's very important that as we grow we're building support systems that is able to help us you know navigate through difficult times and challenging situations one of the key drivers of smiling depression is perfectionism you need to appear perfect to the public please be more authentic about your feelings it's okay not to be strong every day it is not a sign of weakness at all and you don't have to fake it to make it to your own self be true I'll see you tomorrow in my next video. I hope you learned something here today. 
Welcome to day nine. Today, let's talk about burnout and how it affects your mental health. Have you ever felt drained, like you have nothing else to give out? I'm not even talking about that regular being tired that you know some of us experience. I'm talking about a very deep exhaustion that affects your emotional, physical, psychological, mental state to the point that you're not able to do any other thing due to prolonged stress. Have you ever felt that way? If you have, then it means you're probably experiencing burnout. One of the things that you should note about burnout is that it is not something that happens suddenly. Usually, it's a result of accumulated stress. And that's why you would often hear us say that when you feel stressed, when you feel worried, please calm down and get out of that state first. Because if you don't take care of yourself at that point, it would probably result into something bigger or even something deeper. Burnout does not happen overnight. It builds up, it compounds. If you ever experience this, the first thing I want you to do is to stop to take a breather breathe 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 give yourself the permission to stay back and rest it is okay to rest i know that we have always heard show up show up show up but honestly it is okay for you to take a break and rest you must have heard me talk about setting healthy boundaries in some of my previous videos and i think that i even should talk more about that because this is one of the things that would also help you to overcome burnout take a break from your phone i saw one of team amanda's video some time ago and she said put the damned phone down <laughs> Sometimes we really need to give ourselves a break. Prioritize good sleep. Please sleep. Focus on good nutrition and stay hydrated. I hope that you learned something new today. I hope that you're not just learning, you're also implementing the things that you're learning in your daily life. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video tomorrow. We made it to day 10. Today, let's talk about sleep and how it is important for your mental health. There was a time in my life when I really used to pride about the fact that I slept for four hours, I slept for three hours, you know. I probably even write about it to say, last night I slept at 1 a.m. and now I'm awake at 4 a.m. You know, I thought I was you know, doing something fancy. Sooner than later, I discovered that my lack of sleep was affecting my productivity and my mental health in general. I know some people think that sleep is just about resting, but no, it is really beyond that. What happens when we don't sleep? Sleep is that our brain struggles to function optimally and as a result affects our mental health. Lack of sleep can lead to anxiety and depression, irritability, um, stress, and even difficulty in concentrating. During sleep, our brain processes and consolidates memories, regulate emotions, and restore our energy. Experts recommend that adults should sleep between seven to nine hours daily. Now, what do you do to improve your sleep hygiene? Number one, try as much as possible to have a consistent sleep routine. Go to bed and wake up at a particular time. Create a bedtime routine, and by this, I mean that to create something that can nurture you to know that it is time to sleep for instance for me once my laptop screen begins to dim at a particular time i know that okay you know what it's time to start rounding up with work it's time for me to prepare myself to sleep sometimes i play music to you know get me in the mood and just prepare myself to sleep sometimes i talk to my lover that's also another key for me <laughs> now lastly watch your diet watch what you eat and in fact what the time you eat what you eat i hope that you learned something today thank you for watching i'll see you in my next video Today, let's talk about something that I know that many of us must have experienced at one point or the other. Guess what? Before I started this 20-day um, educational um, journey, I had different thoughts in my head. Mary, are you sure you can do it? Are you capable? What if people don't accept it? What if, what if, what if different thoughts and I just continue to second guess myself. I just continue to really doubt the things that, you know, I know that I had inside I could share. I got to the point and I'm like, no, that's imposter syndrome and I'm not going to let it win. Many of us must have experienced this at one point or the other in imposter syndrome. What is it and how can you overcome? Welcome with me for day 11. Let's go. Imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern in which people doubt their abilities and then they fear that someday they'll be exposed as a fraud despite the evidences of their achievements now this is different from self-doubt because it's really deeper than that with imposter syndrome there's just that persistent belief that you're not enough here are some things that can help you overcome imposter syndrome number one stop comparing yourself with other people please your strengths are different your abilities are different your capacities are different so please stop comparing yourself don't always accept how you feel about your incompetences oh i feel like i'm not good enough oh i feel like i'm not beautiful enough oh i feel like i'm going to feel please don't accept those feelings especially when they're negative remind yourself of the amazing things you have done look at you look at how far you've come look at how amazing you've been working on yourself you've been pushing yourself this much remind yourself of some of those things and use that to also boost your confidence i hope that you learned one or two things from today's video thank you for watching what are you grateful for today welcome to day 12. today let's talk about gratitude gratitude is a simple but very powerful tool and it is very significant to your mental health and i'm not even talking about gratitude as you know that's usual thank you that way you know always say i'm talking about it in the sense of shifting our focus from 
the things that are not working in our lives to the things that are actually working. Research has shown that practicing gratitude can help, you know, lower stress, improve our mood, and even reduce the symptoms of um, anxiety and even depression. Let me break it down for you. When you focus on the things you are thankful for, automatically your attention shifts away from, you know, the negativity and reminds you that there's still something good to be thankful for. How can you practice gratitude today? Number one, write out five things that you are grateful for every single day. Make this a regular practice. And you see, it could be as simple as you being grateful for having peace of mind. Think about everything you're grateful for. And that's why I asked you that question at the beginning of this video that what are you grateful for today? Another thing you can do is that as you go about your day today, take a moment to pause and reflect about the simple things that really bring you joy. Another thing you can do, and I think this one is something you should really, really try. Write a gratitude letter to somebody who has influenced you positively. Let them know that you appreciate them. Thank them for that difference they have made in your life. And I'll add one more thing rejoice this one is a cheat code if you're looking for the simplest way to invite joy into your life then gratitude is your solution i hope that you learned something today i'll see you in my next video welcome to day 13. today's conversation is going to do you a lot of good and do you know there's something called toxic positivity i'll tell you about it i'm always this person with the good vibes good energy bad energy stay far away yeah i love it always you know i love the good vibes and all that but if we're being sincere with ourselves, it is not every single day, you know, we have the good vibes. And I think that's where toxic positivity comes to play. Now, what does it mean? Toxic positivity is the belief that no matter how challenging or how difficult a situation is, people should maintain a positive mindset and avoid negative emotions entirely. Now, while it is good to have a positive mindset, what is not good is for us to dismiss some true emotions and feelings because we always want to appear happy and optimistic don't get me wrong optimism is good i mean i must have said it here before you know have a positive mindset but while that is good what toxic positivity does is to take you to the other end of the divide where it invalidates the authentic human expressions like sadness frustration grief and you know all the likes so for instance you have lost someone who is dear to you and you are experiencing grief what toxic positivity would tell you to do at that point is say, oh, don't grieve this person, you know, positive vibes, positive vibe. So because you want to tune into that positive vibe, you will ignore that part of you that wants to grieve, you know, the situation or grieve the person. And you just, you know, cover it up with good vibes only, positive vibes, you know, that's where the problem is. Now, what should you do? Validate all emotions. Your emotions are valid. Allow yourself to feel whatever emotion um, is going through you. Sadness, frustration, um, grief. Allow yourself to, you know, express those emotions without feeling guilty for it, without even judging yourself for it. Another thing you should do is for you to encourage yourself and even encourage others to, you know, talk about these emotions when they feel it. When people ask you, um, how are you doing? If you're not fine, honestly, you shouldn't be saying that you're fine. And if there's something that needs to be addressed, don't just gloss over it and say, oh, it is well, it's going to be fine. Sit at the discussion table and address those things. Come face to face with the reality. For instance, could be you acknowledging that I'm really going through a tough phase in my life right now, but I know that I'm going to conquer. I know that I'm going to overcome. I hope that you learned something today and I hope that you're not going to dismiss your emotions after now. I hope that you're able to let yourself feel all the emotions, express all the emotions while you're being optimistic and you're being positive about your life and the future. You also do not discard the emotions that you feel. I'll see you in my next video. Have a great day. Let's talk about social media and its impact on your mental health. Welcome to day 14. You'll agree with me that social media has become a very integral part of our lives. I mean, this is what most of us use on a daily basis. Um, on social media, we've been able to, you know, build our strong connections and relationships. We've gotten opportunities, entertainment, education, and, um, you know, there's a whole lot of benefit that social media has come with. But you'd also agree with me that it also comes with its own challenges that, that could really impact our mental health negatively. Some of the negative impact of social media that, you know, I can think of, of the top of my head is going to be comparison and a lot of self-esteem issues you know the truth of the matter is most of the things we see on social media is the highlight of people's life another thing that i know that social media could cause is fear of missing out you know it looks as though everyone is you know on their track everyone is pushing and sometimes because you're comparing yourself you also feel left behind you feel like man you're missing out on a lot of things but i promise you you're not missing out you're doing just fine how about cyberbullying and you know people abusing each other oh my god that is now even on the 
right? You see somebody hide behind the keypad, you know, begin to, you know, say really hurtful things to the other person without even knowing what the other person is going through, right? What should you be doing to have a healthier relationship and also protect your mental health, even on the social media space? One thing you want to do is to manage your time effectively. Personally, I have a daily limit of the time I spend on different social media apps. The good thing is you can even set them on these apps. I think this one is also very important. Take control of what you see. Unfollow people that are detrimental to your mental health. Unfollow blogs that are not doing you any good. How often do you do a digital detox? How often do you take breaks away from social media just to reconnect with yourself and realign your values? These things will be really helpful to you. Finally, I'm going to say take charge of your emotions. Stop comparing yourself with things you see on people's feed on social media. You don't know them. You don't know what they're going through. I hope you learned something today. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Welcome to day 15. Today's conversation will be so interesting. Have you ever heard somebody say, Oh, please don't talk to me like that. It's affecting my mental health. Any little thing. Oh, please. I cannot undo that. It's affecting my mental health. They somehow try to use mental health issues to excuse, you know, some behaviors that are not too good. Today, let's talk about the relationship between mental health and you being accountable. One of the things I've been able to establish since the beginning of this series is that mental health challenges are real and no one should downplay it. However, it is important that we also begin to draw the line that mental health issues are not an excuse for bad behavior or for bad attitude you see mental health conditions can actually explain you know why somebody is maybe struggling or dealing with anxiety or depression and all the likes however it is not a free pass to hurt others to say harmful things to others break the rules and even neglect responsibilities mental health conditions are not an excuse for you to behave in a wrong manner if you are someone who is fond of yelling at people when there are issues or when they are trying to call your attention to something and in your bid not to agree to what they are saying, you decide to yell at them or to lash out at them, it may not be linked to mental health conditions. Don't turn your inability to control your anger or to control your emotions to having mental health issues, especially when you have not even been diagnosed. Another thing I see people do under the guise of having mental health issues or mental health conditions is gaslighting others and manipulating them. You know clearly that what you are saying is not true, but you are trying to disguise and then you're putting it under the cover of oh i have mental health issues if you leave i'm going to kill myself if you leave i'm going to hurt myself what you're doing is emotional blackmail you're making the other person feel guilty for maybe the decision they have taken for whatever reason you know best known to them and that is really not nice while societal thoughts are something not to shy away from it is important that if per adventure you begin to you know um entertain societal thoughts go and see a professional go and see a therapist and let proper attention be taken for that not you using it as an opportunity to manipulate another person what should you do please take responsibility for every of your action i've said it before and i'm saying it again take responsibility be accountable learn coping mechanisms it's not everything that is mental health it's not everything that it is oh it is a mental health disorder thank you for watching i hope you learn one or two things today have a great day Hello there, welcome to day 16. Today we're talking about mental resilience and how it is important to your mental health. I personally feel that every individual should master this skill, mental resilience. What is it and how can it be built? In simple terms, mental resilience is the ability for you to adapt, bounce back and maintain emotional well-being in the face of, you know, stress, you know, difficult and, you know, challenging situations. Now, mental resilience is not that you're avoiding the situation or, you know, you're shying away from what is happening. It is you learning how to cope and recover from them you and i know that life pressures and life challenges happens to every one of us i mean we all face it at different instances in our life and our ability to be able to you know push through those periods whilst maintaining our emotional and you know psychological rigor is what mental resilience is now how can you build mental resilience positive mindset is key what you focus on focus on you i'm sure you must have heard that before how you also frame your perspective is also very key in you developing a positive mindset it is you affirming to yourself and reminding yourself that whatever happens i'm going to win i'm going to overcome you don't also have to do life alone rely on your support system when you feel overwhelmed when you feel like you know what i need to talk i need to you know share this burden with somebody please have people around you that you can freely share these things with you need to also learn your stress relieving techniques there's something i learned some time ago and i use it every time when i get tired or when i get overwhelmed i take in two deep breaths and then i breathe out so it's like you inhaling twice and then exhale so it's something like this 
I think you should do it because you're going to really feel better. When you find yourself in the midst of overwhelming challenges or overwhelming situation, also make sure that you're not just focusing on the problems. Look out for solutions also. What can I do to get myself from this point that I am to where I want to be? Who do I need to talk to? Um, what are the actions I need to begin to take? These are the kind of questions you should be asking yourself. I hope you learned something new today. I'll see you in my next video. Words are very powerful and they are not forgotten in your hurry. Today, let's talk about the things not to say to somebody when they are grieving. Welcome to day 17. Some time ago, I attended a lecture that was organized by my school that was focused on grief. I, I remember the lecturer say a lot of things and some of the things that caught my attention are the things I'm going to share with you in this video. The next time you want to talk to somebody who is grieving or somebody who has you know, just lost their dear one, please never you say these words to them. Number one, I know how it feels. Hello, my dear. You really do not know how it feels. Grief is deeply personal. And even if you have experienced a similar kind of grief, everyone processes grief differently. So instead, say something like, I can't imagine how you feel, but I am here for you. Don't say something like, they're in a better place. Now, while that may sound really comforting and nice to say, not everyone shares the same belief with you. You could rather say, they lived a wonderful life. I know you miss them deeply. Say something like that. Another thing you should not say to somebody who is grieving is, it is time to move on. Listen, you are in no capacity to tell somebody who is grieving when to move on or when not to move on. Like I said earlier, people process grief differently. Everyone should be allowed to heal at their own pace. So don't push them. Don't say it is time to move on. Oh, you have grieved enough. It is not in your place to say that. Rather, tell them to take all the time they need to grieve. You'll be here when you need to speak. Sometimes silence also does help. You can just be there, you know, hug them, pat them, be a shoulder for them to cry on not going there and saying the things that would even hurt their feelings the more. I hope you learned something today. I'll see you in my next video. Today we are affirming our mental health. We're saying some things that is going to remind us of how beautiful and how powerful and how worthy we are. Welcome to day 18. Personally, I believe so much that affirmations will work when we believe it. So it's not just about saying it, it's also about believing the things you say. So are you ready to affirm with me today? Let's go. I'm in control of my thoughts and I choose peace over worry. My mental health is my priority and I give myself the permission to take care of it. My feelings are valid and it is okay for me to express them. I'm not defined by my mistakes, I'm growing every day and I'm learning from them. I trust myself to overcome challenges no matter how difficult they may seem. I'm worthy of all the good things of life. I'm doing my best and that is enough. Every day I'm becoming more resilient and stronger. I release self-doubt and I embrace confidence. I am proud of how far I have come and I am excited about the future. I am capable of handling anything that comes my way. My mental health journey is unique and I embrace every part of it with compassion and kindness. I love myself and I'll continue to mind my mental health. I am intentional, I am demure, I am cute, I am beautiful. Thank you so much for affirming with me. I hope that you continue, you know, in this practice regularly because the more we remind ourselves of, you know, these things, the more it continues to get into our conscious and our subconscious mind. It's not enough for you to just say these things, you know, visualize them as you say it. And of course, be very mindful when you are reflecting on them. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today. I'll see you in my next video. When was the last time you practiced mindful eating? This was a question one of my lecturers asked us some time ago. And that question brought again to my consciousness the importance of mindfulness and of course meditation in our mental health journey. Welcome to day 19. Mindfulness is a practice of being fully aware of here and now. It's something like putting a pause into the business of life, the chaos of life, and just being present and staying fully aware of what is happening right now, of our thoughts, of our actions, of the things going on in our mind. You'll agree with me that life gets really busy. Honestly, um, a lot of things happen to us really fast. And because of how we are wired as humans, we're quick to, you know, move on. We're looking for the next thing to do. Immediately we're done with this. Sometimes we're not even able to pause and reflect and be in the present, like be fully aware of what we're doing, of what we're thinking, of how we are doing the things we're doing. And if we continue to run on that blueprint, it's definitely going to affect our mental health. For meditation, I think that meditation is a deeper level of mindfulness. Because what you do with meditation is that you're training your mind to be calm and focused. The beauty of meditation is that anybody can do it. What this practice is going to help you do is to help you become more centered, more resilient, and even better equipped to face life challenges. So, why not start with meditation and mindfulness if you're looking to improve your mental health? I'm putting you to this. Just try meditation and mindfulness for maybe about a week or thereabouts. Tell me what you find. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video.
welcome to day 20 we did it congratulations to us we reached the final day of this 20 day mental health educational journey and i really just want to say thank you to you yes to you thank you so much for sticking with me on this journey i'm so grateful over these 20 days we've explored different topics you know from self-care to mental resilience to mindfulness to meditation to you know uh, managing stress you know, it's a whole lot of conversation you know that we have been having in the last 20 days and i celebrate you because each day you have taken a step towards a deeper understanding of yourself and your mental health and that is very commendable so as we end this it's important that um, I emphasize the importance of keeping the momentum and sustaining the things that you have learned. So think about the last 20 days, what things stood out for you. It could be affirmations, it could be mental resilience, whatever stood out for you, you know, just continue in that practice. And of course, I think I'd also like to hear from you um, in these 20 days, what have you learned? Please drop it in the comment section. This I would really, really appreciate. And it means a lot to me. Let me know that you learned something. Let me also know that this, you know, um, impacted you in some really positive ways. Another thing I want to mention, which is very important is that you continually do your regular check-ins on yourself. Ask yourself, how am I doing today? How am I feeling presently? What do I need in my life right now? Just ask yourself questions, you know, to also prevent overwhelm and burnout. And when you see that you probably are not finding answers to this question, it might be the time for you to, you know, talk to somebody or reach out to professionals that can be of support to you. Of course, for more mental health content, I'm going to drop some handles in the caption. I think that you should follow these pages because you're going to get more, you know, mental health education, more mental health awareness and content on those pages. I would strongly recommend um, Talk Mental Health Foundation because you're going to get lots of content on, on you know, mental health, how you can improve your mental health and you can even you know get to speak you know with counselors for free so do well to follow and now as i wrap this up i'm going to also encourage you to set one small realistic mental health goal for yourself it could be you saying that for the next 30 days i want to you know write down what i'm grateful for you could say for the next one week i want to say kind words to somebody whatever it is just you know set it as a realistic goal that will continue to help you um you know improve your mental health don't forget that you are capable, you're worth it, you're resilient, you're enough, and your mental health journey is worth every bit of the effort. I wish you a lifetime of growth and well-being. Until you see my face again, who knows, maybe I can just do you know, another challenge some other time, but just continue to take care of yourself and ensure that you are in a good place mentally. Thank you so much. You have a very, very lovely day.